What the? What? Oh my goodness. That, that's T-Bar May. and Mace. And they're both teaming up on Drew McIntyre. Wait, what just happened? Why? What? This is such good. What's going on, YouTube? It's Sensei, a place to be chill, Mr. Andy. Back to give you guys another Monday Night Raw review for 4-12-2021. It's been a long time since I reviewed Raw. It's been almost about a month since I reviewed Raw. And I just reviewed SmackDown on Friday. I said, well, it's the Raw after WrestleMania. WrestleMania Monday, as they used to call it. Or, And I figured, like, we're going to be the Thunderdome. We're not going to have to cry. It's not going to necessarily be the same. But maybe they can book a surprising show. Bring some surprises here, stuff like that. And they didn't. They, I swear, the, the Monday after WrestleMania for the past two years... Have been sucky. Last year, I'll, I I will give them a slight pass because of the pandemic, and they had WrestleMania in the Performance Center and all that stuff like that was changing. But even after WrestleMania 35, it was lackluster at best. It, it, I mean, they had some moments in there, but uh, no, it wasn't what you expected. And this is after Kofi won the title after, after after Kofi Mania, so it just it just hasn't gotten to that level when you know Brock was pissed and. Uh, F5 Michael Cole and then you know he wanted Seth Rollins for cheating him out of the, the, the biggest size like that is the kind of raw you need or Dolph Ziggler cashing in the money in the bank and win a championship or the, the debut of a, of a huge faction like that that's what you want none of that here Bobby Lashley comes in with MVP to start off the show and they run the riddle while, while Riddle is trying to you know metaphorically talk about also Bobby says that he knocks him down and says you are a loser I'm a winner. I was just like, just have MVP talk for you, Bobby, please. All right, just, just, just like, please, just ha let me have that. Then we start off. The, we start off with the WWE champion, the Almighty Bobby Lash taking on Riddle. First match about the car, and I said, oh my God, it's gonna have a sucky end, whatever the case may be. The match is what you expected was a glorified squash match as Bobby is just dominating Riddle. He talks him out over to uh, over uh the barricade for the commercial break comes back in uh riddle tries to uh he, he knocks him down with a knee goes to the top to do, do that, that twisting bro thing but then bobby catches him in, in the hurt lock from from down there and then riddle taps out and that's how it is so bobby lashley wins then uh we go next match cedric at, uh cedric and uh Shelton benjamin which it, it just sucks man like they should still be part of her business and I, I i like that trust me I don't even like the way they about to go now at the end of it, but I, we'll, we'll get to that. They take on the returning Viking Raiders, who look a little bit bigger, to be honest with you. But it's glad to see, uh, you know, Ivar and them back uh, as the Viking Raiders because we desperately, desperately need tag teams, okay? And we definitely need tag teams. Vince want to break up everything and destroy all shit. We have no tag teams, especially on Raw. So seeing them back, so of course, they, they, they make work of Benjamin, Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander, and win the match. That's how it's going to be. That's, that's basically how it was. Uh, after that, this is going to because I, I took I took barely any notes. Uh, Charlotte came out. Charlotte returned. That's how it was. It came out for commercial break, and her music was playing as we came out for commercial break. I'm like, no build up, no her walking to the, walking down the hallway like, so Charlotte's back, but okay. Uh... She comes back. She cuts. A, she cuts a good promo. It's a really good promo from Charlotte. Talk about that. She was. She was left off WrestleMania. She's tired of being a little old humble Charlotte. You know. Uh, she. But it's not her fault that she was left off of there because she asked Oscar for the title match of all. Oscar didn't even want to give it to her. Rhea Ripley just came in there and kind of stole that spot uh, uh, from there. It's not her fault that her dad wanted to come back and act a fool. It ain't her fault that Lacey Evans wanted to have go, go get pregnant and didn't want to face her in no match. That's probably would have been the, uh, one of them WrestleMania matches right there. But no. So they're gonna do at the queen, but you know what? The queen is back, and she's gonna she's gonna take her rightful place and do do, do all the jazz. It, it was it, it, she put the whole locker room on notice. So I it, the, the promo was good. That's probably one of the only good things about Raw tonight. Uh, the, as we get ready for the Raw Women's Champion rematch, Rhea Ripley taking on Oscar, and this match just felt these two can have a good match. They're two really great wrestlers in these women, but th th there's no heat really in this match because Rhea was just brought, because I'm pretty sure they were trying to, after the Royal Rumble, they were trying to keep Rhea Ripley until tonight, the WrestleMania Monday, to go face off against Charlotte, who probably would have won the Women's Championship from Oscar at WrestleMania, and then we do Charlotte and, and Rhea Ripley again. But since Charlotte was gone, had COVID, had all these other problems with her, then they, they stuck Rhea, Rhea Ripley in there 
three weeks before WrestleMania, so there was no chance to get acquainted to the story, build, or anything. So then we come to the rematch, it's just like, okay, we're just going to have another regular matchup. But Charlotte comes out there and, and takes out both Rhea Ripley and Asuka. So it looks like at WrestleMania Backlash, I don't even really got to put the WrestleMania in front of there, it's going to be a uh, triple threat match between Charlotte, Rhea Ripley, and Asuka. That's not confirmed yet, but I I'm saying by the way it's going, it looks like it's going to be. Alexa Bliss uh, has a same on her playground, and she said, explain why did she do the thing she do to to turn that theme match into a, one of the terrible WrestleMania openings of all time. And she said that, you know, there was a once, once more time there was a little girl who got caught up in the darkness. You know, so it is, it, they should, it's showing Alexa Bliss the career that when the fiend came, got her, and then all of a sudden that dark darkness was going when Randy Orton killed off the fiend. And then she was wondering, did, did she even still need the darkness? It's showing all the things that she was doing by herself. So now she's showing that uh, the darkness is in her way, and she's introducing one of her own little puppet type things. That, that, that like uh, it's a very creepy looking puppet. I don't know what her name is, and that's how the uh, the segment ends. I'm like, so are we continuing with Randy Orton? Are we going somewhere else with Randy Orton? Are we going? You trying to have a rivalry with the Fiend? Or are you just going to bring this character into the women's division? Like, yeah, how, 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 how are we playing this out? I don't know. Miz and Maurice, uh, oh, Miz and Morrison are coming out from Miz TV, but then Maurice comes in the back, so we bringing Maurice out there. Now I'm like, oh, okay, another surprise, I guess, seeing Maurice. Uh, they come out talking about Miz TV and talk about what the new show is going to be tonight with Morrison in there. They're just doing best friend kind of uh, bickering and fighting. And then here comes Damian Priest coming out talking about how great Bad Bunny was and you didn't give him no recognition. And it's, it's it's not all about the Miz, but here's the, the, the headline, Bad Bunny beats Miz. Well, then... The, Miz wants a match with Damian Priest. He like so, but so does Morrison. So Maurice is like, why don't just both y'all take them on? Like seriously, like she is the voice of reason right here because they make Miz and Morrison look so dumb. So they they, they go for the handicap matchup, but they still got their their dress clothes on and what and what have you. So then we got Damian Priest taking on Miz and Morrison, and he's dominant literally the whole matchup. I really don't want to keep seeing Damian Priest do that. they running and jumping over the top rope type to, to die. Cause he getting closer and closer to that apron. And you know what happened with Keith Lee? When he dove and he hit his head hit that apron, bro. Vince, you know, send the big man down and start doing rolls again. So you don't you don't want to do that. Uh <clears throat> afterwards, uh Damian Priest gets distract uh well he hits Miz with the well, you know with the crossroads kind of thing like that, or, or, or the, the broken arrow, whatever they call it now. And he goes for for the Miz. Maurice pulls the Miz's leg. And then it distracts him enough. And then he, she gets up on the apron. He's like, look, I'm politely trying to ask you. I'll be hurting you. Get down. Then Miz hits the skull crusher finale. And then uh, uh, puts his uh, feet on top rope. And does a 30 pin and wins the matchup. So I'm like, oh, here we go. We're going to make Dan Priest lose to this kind of shit. For the Miz and Morrison to win that. So that was stupid. MVP comes out to address probably the celebration of Bobby Lashley. I'm like, so why had a match in the beginning? But okay, whatever. But uh, Drew McIntyre comes out and talks about, you know, how dominant Bobby Lashley was. But, you know, that you, you got it his way. And he hopes Bobby's head is big enough so he can hit it with the Claymore and get back his WWE Championship. But then here comes Braun Strowman talking about, so after I defeated the man of Shane McMahon, now I'm ready for, you know, the child shot. Because, yeah, it took that long for you to give her a CMA because you're being stupid. But then here comes Randy Orton. Like, there's no more Fiend. There's no more... Alexa Bliss, it's time for me to focus on what I need to focus on, and that's my championship. And then, as predictable, Anna Pierce comes out and says, you're giving me a great idea. Okay, like, we, ah, sh no shit. Actually, the better idea would have had a fatal four-way at Backlash, but no. We're doing a triple threat match tonight, and the winner will face Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania Backlash. And I'm like, it's going to be Drew McIntyre. And first of all, it's going to be Randy Orton to try something new. But I was like, but I don't think he's truly done with the fiend yet, because I don't know, how, I don't know how that's going to go, because uh, what happens later on tonight. But um, that's just going to happen. Then we get Elias and Jackson Riker going to take on the New Day. The New Day are very ecstatic and hype in their promo, especially after losing their Raw Tag Team Championships. Like, can y'all please book people? That if they lose a match, that they give a shit about when they lost the matchup instead of act like they don't care. That describes my gears uh, to to the umpteenth degree. So we have a match with them and, and Jackson Riker. Uh, they end up winning that matchup. Uh, Xavier Woods pins Elias. Some I forgot how he pinned them. It didn't really matter. They uh, they end up winning the matchup. 
And uh, as we get re- I, I I think I start t- tuning out. If I miss something, I probably did with the triple threat matchup. Or Andrew McIntyre and Braun Strowman are, are going at it. Uh, Braun Strowman knocks out Drew McIntyre and Randy York into the outside. Uh, Strowman tries to go for the choo-choo run. And then McIntyre hits with the steel steps. And then Randy York back drops McIntyre on the, on, on the table. And they, this new guy on commentary, I don't like him. <laughs> okay. And it's because he just don't know how to sell the movie. I mean, it's still trying to get something used to. I think Alvin Vink, I think his name is. I'm not necessarily sure. Uh, Randy Orton takes Braun in the ring, gives him an RKO. As he's pinning him, Drew McIntyre runs and gives him like a, a Claymore kick while he's on the pin. And they don't even sell up this to Claymore kick. It's like, oh my God, Drew McIntyre with the interruption. And then he pins him. It's like, it's an anticlimactic pin, it feels like. Well, then Drew McIntyre wins the matchup, stares down MVP at the top, but then MVP has Mace and T-Bar, or they respond to call MVP, and take down Drew McIntyre. This better not be the new Hurt Business. Don't you admit, as much as I love Dominic Dajakovic, and as much as I want him to get justification for himself, I don't want him here. And I damn sure don't want Dio Madden here. Dominic Dajakovic needs to be doing shit himself. He needs to be in that mid-card picture for the United States Championship. That's where he needs to be and win that championship. Mace don't need to be here. He need to go back to NXT. Y'all are switching Cedric and Shelton out for these guys? I hope not. And first of all, why you got the retribution shit on in the first place? If they're not going to be a tag team with that shit on, then take it off. But I don't want them coming in there with no suits being the new Hurt Business. That's not what I want. That's not what I want at all. And it sucked. Raw gets a thumbs down for me tonight. It was not a good show. It wasn't a good follow-up to WrestleMania at all. The WrestleMania backlash is looking like just a lot of WrestleMania rematches. And I'm like... I understand that's what the backlash is supposed to be about, but when it's the WrestleMania backlash, like you, you, it, it looks like we're just going to get the same WrestleMania card over. Like We're probably going to get Apollo and Big E again. We're probably going to get Bianca and Sasha again, which I really don't mind. We, we, uh, you know, we'll, probably get Dan, we'll probably get Dan on Edge, you know, and then we'll probably get a new challenger for um, Roman. There'll be some kind of changes, but like Drew and, and Bobby, again, needs to be a, st- a step to that, or it needs to be something. But Bobby's to hang on to that thing until SummerSlam, until Brock come back or something like that, and then we have a Brock and Bobby match. That's what needs to happen. But guys, that was Monday Night Raw. Oh god, I don't even know why I came back to reviewing these fucking shows, but I kind of, I did I did it for you, so you guys should check out my review. Uh, hit the like button if you guys enjoyed me, not Raw me. Hit the hit the subscribe button for more dirty content that's just not it's not Raw right here on Nerco Studios. Especially when I think I'm gonna try to just review NXT and AEW. Uh, this week. So once again, this is an insane place to be. Children, Mr. A&D, and the Nerd Coalition is out.